Well, this project has been the analog to digital converter, and it's used for connecting analog devices such as this uh, variable resistor, this light sensitive resistor, if you will, a uh, photo resistor, and being able to read that and make sense of it with a digital device like the Pi back here because the Pi senses ones and zeros. And so, what this thing does is it creates 4,095 different levels, different digital levels from an analog input. So it'll take something at, at the highest level at 4,095 and at the lowest level of zero, and it will give a, uh, a digital reading based on the analog input. And as you can see, I've got some resistors, resistor, and then this photoresistor, and that's what I've been playing with this week. Okay, let's do a walk around on this and we'll uh, see how it's set up. So let's start over here on this side. I've got the power coming in 3 volts from the Pi, 3.3 volts. I put in a big capacitor because even wiggling these wires would cause this thing to reset. I put in a small capacitor here for uh, spikes and here's the 3 volts coming in here to power it. So that's pin 14. Pin 13 is the reference, external reference. I'm not using that, I'm using the internal reference. Here is the data line, the green one, and the clock line is the white, if I remember correctly. Then the next one is a no connect, that blank one, that first blank one is a no connect. Uh, the next one is uh, port 7, channel 7, and this is channel 6 where I've got a resistor on it. And then I've got ground over here. Okay, so let's look around this and keep our tour going. You can see I've got this ground jumper to over here and here you can see pin 7 which is ground. And the rest of the pins on this side are all channels. So it starts over here on the left where I got the photoresistor at zero and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the other two are over here, seven and eight. And this is a 12-bit device with eight channels. Before we conclude our walk around, let's take a look and see what the wires are. We got the red that goes back over to the board for power. And that's the Pi 3 volt. And we have the data line, which is next. So it's one, three, five is the clock line. Uh, 7 is blank, and 9 would be the ground. And you're probably wondering what this thing here is. I'm experimenting trying to get rid of some of the RFI and making the results more accurate. I think I'm getting a lot of RFI on these lines. But that'll be another video. Okay, so that concludes our walk around. And let's go on and see what this does for us. Well, here's our photoresistor, and here's our million ohm resistor, and back here's our 100,000 ohm resistor. This is the photoresistor, and it's telling us how much light there is. And this is the million ohm resistor, and it's giving us a voltage value. And the more uh, resistance there is, the higher the voltage, because as the resistance goes down, it acts more like a direct short between the uh, detector pin and the ground, and a direct short has basically zero volts. And you can see that over here, the lower resistor has has a uh, lower voltage. So let's look at the photoresistor, and let's see what it'll do for us. You can see as there's more light and less light, the value changes. So I can detect anything that has, for example, a variable resistance. It could be a rheostat where I'm changing a knob or something like this, or detecting a change in resistance because of like fluid level on wires or some such. So anything like that, uh, we can use uh, the analog to digital converter to do those kind of measurements. Okay, let's go look at the software behind this. So this is the software behind what we're doing. I will say this is one of the most difficult programs I've written to date because it's the, the equipment is so badly documented. Um, but I found a document uh, from TI, and I'll show you, it's from this website, 
that uh, talks about the ADS 7828 and they do a really good job of explaining it, but without that I could not have done this. Okay, so on with it. The uh, ADS 7828, the device address it came with was a hexadecimal 48, which is decimal 72, or binary 100100. It's a 12-bit A to D converter, and the 12-bit is important because we're going to get back two bytes, which is 16 bits, and we're going to have to convert that to 12 bits. Uh, we're going to use 3.3 volts from the Pi to power it. And again, here's the site from uh, TI. I've got three channels connected today. I'm using uh, channel 0, and I'm using it uh, as a plus. Uh, some of the channels can be uh, differential, so you have a ch one channel is plus and the other channel is minus in relationship to each other. I'm not an expert on the differential, so I'm not going to talk about that today. I've used all single-ended. So channel zero is the address is 1000. This first bit tells you whether it's differential or single-ended, and one is single-ended. So the next three are the address uh, for, that, for that channel. And then a 1-1, one, one, which uh, I'll talk about in a second. And then there's two bits at the end, which you don't care. I've always used 1-1, one, one, just FYI. And channel 1, here is the uh, single-ended, and here's the address. The address is 100, plus again 1-1. One, one. And then channel 6 is single-ended, and the address is 0, 0-1-1, one, one, and then plus the 1-1. One, one. Okay, so these are all resistors to ground. The one is a photoresistor, channel zero is a photoresistor, but it's still a resistor. Then I'm going to import time, so I can use the sleep function. I'm going to use SM bus. I'm not going to use all these fancy third-party things. I'm just going to use SM bus. I'm going to grab the bus information, so that's the I2C bus value. And then I'm using uh, the device address, which is the hexadecimal 48. And I got that by using the I2C detect uh, minus Y1 command. Okay, so let's go on and look at the main loop and see what we're doing there. So let's take a look at the main loop. Starts right here. Uh, while true, in other words, I just run it forever. Channel zero right. Okay, it's, this device is kind of strange. This analog to digital converter is kind of strange because in order to get the information, first you have to do a write to it and tell it, okay, prepare the information and then I'll come back and read it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a write to it. We're going to give it the device address, which is that hexadecimal 48, and then we're going to give it a command. And we have to build up that command. And that's where this document from TI comes in really handy. So this is the byte we're going to give it up here. This is how, this is the information that you build up in that byte. These two tables right here contain that information. This one down here contains those two bits which we didn't talk about earlier. But without this table, you couldn't do this. And you can see over here, this is the first bit, and I said, uh, one is single-ended, and that's what we did. And if you put a zero as the first bit, it would be differential. So you would be comparing two channels to each other. And down here, where the bit is one, you're comparing the channel to the ground, to the common. Uh, down here, you'll see later that this one one means that we're going to use the internal reference voltage and we're going to turn on the ADC. So you can turn it on and off using these bits and you can also turn on and off the uh, external reference. So we're not using the external reference, we're using the internal. So in all my examples I've got the, those two bits set to 1-1. One, one. And here's how those bits look. They have the SD, which is the, either the single-ended or differential, and then the channel address, so you have the channel bit 2, 1, and 0. Then you have the PD1 and PD0, and again the PD1 and PD0 are the things that tell the device whether you're using uh, an external reference, voltage reference, or internal voltage reference, and whether the A2D, uh, the analog to digital converter, is either on or off. 
So in our case, we're using uh, SD as binary one. Uh, in the case of channel zero, the address is binary zero zero zero. The PD the PD one is binary one, and the PD zero is also binary one. So when we put this string all together, it's going to be one zero 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 one one, and then two don't care conditions, which I'm using one one all the time. And here again is the SD is either differential or single ended. Those other two bits are called power down. PD1 is 1 and PD0 is 1. So it means the analog to digital converter is on and the internal voltage reference is on. And that's what I'm using. Okay, here's where I said we're going to do that bus write. We have to do a write before we do a read. Again, that's strange, but yes, that's the way it is. So we're giving it the hexadecimal 48 and then we're giving it that binary string which we just talked about. Uh, so the uh, single-ended and then the address for channel 0 and then those four ones, uh, those are the PD0 and PD1 and then the two don't care. So now we're set up to read channel 0. I'm going to go to sleep. Uh, I'm not sure this is really necessary. The TI manual makes reference to this, so I put in some time, but I'm not sure that's absolutely necessary. And now we're going to do the bus read. We're going to go look at that channel and we're going to read what that information is in that channel. So again, we give it the hexadecimal 48, the uh, channel 0 address, and then we're going to get back two bytes. And again, that's 16 bits. This is only a 12 bit device, so we're going to have to convert that 12 bits into Sorry, that 16 bits into 12 bits. And here's where we do the read, and we're going to store it in data zero for channel zero. Uh, so we're going to bus read I2C block data, hexadecimal 48, again the same binary command string, and two bytes. Now for the other channels, we're just going to repeat exactly the same thing. We're going to do a bus write, except we're going to use the address for channel 1. Then we're going to do the sleep, and then we're going to store the data from channel 1 by doing a read to that address, hexadecimal 48, using the binary address for channel 1, and again, two bytes, and we're going to store it in data 1, and then one more time, we're going to do this for channel 6, and we can do this for all eight channels, but I'm only using three today. So here's the same thing for, same code for channel six. And then we're going to move down to converting it. So here's our conversion process. We're going to take the data that we captured in these like data zero, data one, data six variables. And that's two bytes, and we're going to convert those two bytes, 16 bits, into 12 bits. So we're going to use the example of data 0 and data 1. And data 0, uh, first position, contains the most significant byte. And data 0, the second position, contains the least significant byte. We're going to and the most significant byte with a binary 0000111 so that we keep the rightmost four bits. So we want the bits on that side, and we're going to discard the leftmost four bits. Uh, we're going to shift the most significant byte left eight bits, which is a hexadecimal uh, 100 or a decimal 256, and there's the binary equivalent. So we're going to shift it left eight bits. We're going to add the least significant byte to the most significant byte and give us a 12-bit output. Then we're going to take this uh, and we're going to get the raw 12-bit information by doing this process here to each one of these variables. So take for the let's just do the first one. We'll take data zero. We'll take the uh, zero position, which is the most significant byte. We're going to end it with a binary 1111 multiplied by a decimal 256 to shift it. And then we're going to add to that the data uh, least significant byte. We do that for all three of the all three of the variables. And then we simply print it out, uh, channel 0, 1, and 6. And that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing here is channel 1, 
It's channel 0, channel 1, channel 6, and here are the data points. So we're printing out the raw data 0, uh, a tab, raw data 1, tab, and raw data 6. And that's pretty much it. Uh, again, this was difficult mostly because the documentation around it is not very good. But uh, anyway, it works, and I think I've got a couple more projects to, to try with this. Okay, well I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi analog-to-digital converter work.